Hi folks, welcome back to Math with Captain Rod. Uh, we're going to take a look at in detail here uh, number 21 in section 14.6a. We're also going to at least chat about how to set up problems 4, 7, 18, and 24. All right, so number 21 here looks like this. It's the toughest one I see on the page there. y to the 2 thirds minus 5y to the 1 third plus 4 equals 0. So the idea behind these problems is to try to figure out some sort of substitution here that will make this thing look quadratic. And the reason why quad quadratic, see, look at here, second power, first power, and a constant. <clears throat> now, you'll notice here, though, that this term here, we've got a 3 here and here. So remember what this means. y to the 2 thirds, just a little do a little review here. y to the 2 thirds means the cube root of y squared. Or you can think of it maybe as y squared right, to the 1 third. Because um, when you raise a power to a power, you multiply exponents. And by the way, you could also think of it as y to the 1 third squared. And this is probably the best one to think about for why the setup that I'm going to do works. If I think of this as y to the one third squared, right, then this term right here is, you know, you can think of it as something squared minus five times something to the first plus a constant, and that makes it quadratic. So what I'm gonna do here is make a substitution that looks like uh, this. We're gonna let, say, x equal uh, y to the one third. And again, the reason for doing that is this will now become an x squared, and this will become just an x. Now, uh, some of the things I saw in the last test, you can't do this. You can't say let y equal y to the one third. Don't use the same variable here that you have over here. This is that will not be good. Don't do that. So we're making we're making the substitution here now. You know y x. It's just a you know call it anything you want. You could call it a b z anything. It doesn't matter. And now what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this equation as um, let's see x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. And again, because y to the 2 thirds is equal to y to the 1 third squared. And we're letting y to the 1 third be x. You can see right here, this would be x squared. That's why this term becomes this term. And the same thing here, that's why this uh, y to the 1 third becomes x. Uh, just the x. All right, so this is now a nice, very pleasant looking quadratic, and it looks pretty factorable to me, probably x minus 4, x minus 1. So maybe x is 4, or maybe x is 1. Now, one of the things I saw in the last test is a lot of people stopped here and said, I'm done. Um, if this were the original problem, you would be done, but it's not. This is the original problem. So we, we have to take this and translate it back to the original, right, by our substitution. So I'm going to need a little more room here. Uh, let's do this. I'm going to take this and maybe shrink a little bit and move this over. All right, that's good enough. So now I'm going to start over here. So we have x is equal to 4 or x is equal to 1, but remember, x was y to the one third. So y to the one third is equal to four, or y to the one third is equal to one. This equation is solved by cubing both sides. y to the one third cubed is y. And four cubed, I believe, is 64. Four times four is 16, times four more, yep, all right. Over here now, again, we're gonna solve this by cubing both sides, and what? Left hand side is y to the first, and one cubed is one. So the two solutions are 64 and one. Now you're supposed to check this. Uh, you would you know, take this value, sub it here, here, and make sure it works. Take the other one, sub it here, here, and make sure it works. I'm gonna skip that for the video. So that's uh, how you solve these things. Oh, then I wanted to talk about just setups here for these other problems. I'm not gonna do them in detail, but I'll talk about the setups. All right, so number four, let me write that thing out. So it says x squared minus 29. I'm sorry, it does not say that. It says 
x to the fourth minus 29x squared plus 100 equals 0. So the important thing to recognize here is that this x squared, you could think of it as x squared squared. All right, and then minus 29. And that x squared, if you don't mind, just for a moment, I'm going I'm to call this x squared to the first power plus 100. Now, you don't normally need to write this step out. I just wanted to do this to kind of demonstrate why this works. So the appropriate substitution is let maybe z or anything you want equal x squared. Because now when we take this and sub it, I'm sorry, when we take this and sub it here and here, this is now going to read z squared minus 29z equals 100. And then the equation is uh, quadratic in z. Then you'd solve it for z, you're going to get two solutions. But just don't forget when you work it, when you get those two solutions, z equals a number and z equals a number, you're not done because it isn't z we're looking for, it's x. So then you'd have to go back to our substitution. x squared equals a number and x squared equals a number. Okay? Keep in mind that when you solve these, you're going to typically get two solutions out because if x squared equals a number, typically x you know, we'll have a positive solution and a negative solution. So this problem could yield four answers, which it should. I've mentioned this in class. When you have a fourth degree polynomial, you could get up to four solutions, right? You don't necessarily have to get four, but you could get up to four, and this one probably will. Let me get rid of this and talk about a couple more. All right, seven. So seven looks like x minus x to the one half minus 20 equals zero. I know that's kind of a strange looking one, but now this, this x here doesn't have a power, but you can think of it as maybe x to the first power. And again, notice that this thing is, um, what you have to notice is that x to the first power is equal to x to the one half power squared. So the appropriate substitution here is going to be, you know, maybe let z equal x to the one half power. Because now this will become a z and this will become a z squared. And you'll have a quadratic in z. And again, you'll probably get it down to z equals a number and z equals a number. And then um, Remember that that's going to be like x to the um, one-half equals a number, and x to the one-half equals a number. Now, here are some things you have to watch out for. x to the one-half is that. And this thing right here is uh, positive. That's called a principal square root. This equation doesn't have two solutions. All right, This is different than saying something like x squared equals a number. This one has two solutions because x could be positive or negative. This one does not have two solutions. All right? The square root of a value is defined to be positive. It's called the principal square root. And if we get something out of this like x to the 1 half equals a negative number, that's not possible. Right? And you would throw that solution out. Right? Wait a minute. No, that one is possible. I'm sorry, because you're going to solve this by squaring both sides. My bad. Uh, that would be good. Uh, but the important thing here is that you solve this by squaring both sides. So um, you'll get, in this case, one solution out of both sides of these things here and here. So that should be enough on the setup at number seven. All right, I'll talk about 18. Where it says x to the first, I guess I'll just leave it blank, minus 5x to the 1 half plus 6 equals 0. Right? So it's a kind of a strange looking equation, but what you need to recognize is that this thing, right, x to the first, is equal to this thing, x to the 1 half squared. Right? When you raise a power to a power, you're multiplying the exponents. So the appropriate substitution, do something like let z equal x to the 1 half. This will now become a z, and this will become a z squared, and it will be quadratic in z. 
once you find your two solutions for z, then don't forget, then you'll have x to the 1 half equals something, x to the 1 half equals something. And it's about 24, and I guess I don't need to delete the rest of this. <clears throat> so 24, let's see, it says z to the 2 thirds minus 1 equals 0. Well, honestly, this one, I don't see any reason to do a substitution. I mean, I, you know, I would just do this. Z, equal, is e, z to the 2 thirds is equal to 1, and then raise both sides to the 3 halves power. Because when you take z to the 2 thirds, and then we raise it to the 3 halves, you, you can solve it. Boom. Um, I guess I don't see any reason to do anything else. If you did try to do a, a substitution on it, this would be a good one. Maybe let uh, x equal z to the 1 third. Because if you do that, this would now be x squared. And then you're going to have uh, x squared equals 1. And then you'll have um, solve this for x, back substitute for z, and get a value out of it. So that should um, that should do it for this. I want to think about this and just see if there's anything else I want to chat or uh, mention. Give me a moment. Yeah, I after kind of mentally jogging through this a little bit, I did realize there's a part I want to go back and chat about. Um, and I kind of caught it right here when I was looking at this. This thing has two solutions. X could be 1 or X could be minus 1. And when we back substitute this, I think we're going to get two valid answers here. So we have 1 equals Z to the 1 third. Cube both sides, Z is, or, yeah, Z is equal to 1. We're done there. This one right here, minus 1 equals Z to the 1 third. We solve this by cubing both sides, so Z could be negative 1. That looks like that's a valid solution to me, and I think I missed that back over here on the left. So I'm going to go back and chat about that a little bit more. So when you study this line right here, and again, let me write it like this. I, I did that a little quick. Okay, Z to the 3 halves. Remember that that's Z squared cubed rooted, I'll just write like, uh, how about this, is equal to 1. Now, there's two possibilities here. Z could be 1 or minus 1. So let me do this. Let's, let me do this more carefully. Cubing both sides, we would have Z squared is equal to 1, because 1 cubed is 1. And now, when we square root both sides, we get two possibilities. Z equals 1 or Z equals minus 1. Sorry, I missed that that first time when I just quickly raised it to the 3 halves power. So um, two solutions on this guy, right? And I think that was uh, 24. We've talked about them all. Actually, I guess that one we went to completion. So I hope that this helps with solving problems on this page. Have a great day.